traditional way here, he has the cross face, he has the underhook, and how we look to deal with this, okay? There's a bunch of little things. Um, again, generally, there's two different ways depending on whether the person is bigger than you or about the same size as you. Um, generally, your first port of call, if the person's got to this place and applied pressure towards you, is going to be putting on the lockdown, okay? It may be obvious for some people, but we've got to cover it because, again, what we have to do is deal with this pressure on our face. And as long as his weight is up and forward, we're basically just shafted, okay? To use technical term. So, generally, as soon as we have, first thing is the foot behind the knee, trapping and pinning it down here. Because what we can't, if I'm back here, he will start to raise his knee up and he'll start going, once he gets here, we're in world of trouble. We can't have this happen, we're getting our double pass. So, as soon as it's here, I will pin the back of his knee down with my hip leg, as much as I can, and I will step over, pin, pin and lock down. And we should always, at least partly, diminish the pressure on the shoulder. This is important because it makes everything else possible afterwards. Well, again, I can't afford to be messing around. I definitely can't open my knees up very much because once that knee comes higher than the line of my hips or my knee, he's going to pass and I'm pretty much done. So if you start bringing the knee up, if I don't go up with you, then I'm going to get my guard pass. Same as if you're doing like a closed guard break. If your hips get pinned to the ground, you're done. Here it's kind of the reverse. I can't allow his knee to come higher. So generally, the best way to do that is, again, to pin the knee down with the blade of my uh, ankle here. Ankle's down, blade here now, whatever. Uh, and then this foot will come over, here, here, here. But don't start messing around and get to this stage. You've got no direct pressure, because again, the knee is going to come up. And if the knee does come up, you can come up with it and make sure you're higher, stamp it down, and take the pressure off. This is just essential overall in terms of stopping this happening. So, again, basic start. So he's across here, outside foot goes, uh, inside foot, I guess, but it goes pinning hard down the knees so the knee doesn't go anywhere. We step through the gap, which keeps the pin down still, underneath, knees together, push down and extend. Again, most guys will have done the lockdown at some point. First thing to be aware of is that the lockdown is always, pretty much always, done reverse, i.e. the outside foot comes over and we lock it here. Lots of guys do do it this way, it's just generally not as good. Again, A is my legs don't reach, and it basically, the purpose of the lockdown is to keep his hips in line with mine, to keep him relatively flat. This creates rotational pressure and forces him to go this way here, which is getting work for some people, but once it gets to here, I'm slowing the ankle down, but I'm not really controlling things. What I want is for everything to be kept in a nice straight line here, so he doesn't go anywhere too out of control. Okay? So relatively simple. So he has the cross face, he has the underhook. Life sucks, mostly overall. Okay? Quick thing also, with this hand hit, don't focus too much right now and try to do stuff like this. Okay, I'm very limited on the face pushing. because what, what I want to limit is myself getting turned to this side. The more I use this hand uh, to do stuff across here, the more his pressure allows him to start turning me down and the worst things get hit. And then he gets smashed and killed. Okay? This also applies to doing this. Generally also a terrible idea if there's that. Or again, if you just drive yourself into my arm and just put it this way. All of this turns me to the side and makes life very miserable for me. If you want to play deep half, that's fine, but that's a different class, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so generally, if I have to go somewhere with the hand, I tend to just go over the shoulder and trap this down. I'll look at this in a bit more detail afterwards. But generally, one, we pin, we step, we go through, we extend the pitch. When you're here, guys, the toes are bent upwards here to give you control over the ankle, and your knees go together, thigh master style, to keep everything under control. And we stay here and there. If I get to here and again, I start coming up, this will usually lead to, again, him driving his forehead into my arm. And this makes things very difficult overall. So generally, we're just going to leave this here now, so he can't attack it and make my day miserable. So start relatively boring, but simple. Again, he has all the control. Right foot stays heavy on the back. Of, like you're trying to like, slice it, basically. Over, 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 here. And then we can start working on the inside and that stuff afterwards. That's step one. We'll do a whole bunch of stuff afterwards. Simple, simple. Nothing fancy. Cool. Again, just trying to get the pressure off the face to make us able to work. So on three, one, two, three. Use it as a way to relieve that pressure. I've just realized how amazing that crash guard is, by the way. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, because again, I'm not going to be the guy who goes, the only way to play half guard is this, so you can hold on and squeeze and make everyone hate you and all your training partners hate you and all that kind of stuff. We all know that guy. Um, but the main thing is that, again, there's not many ways to really deal with this pressure. There's using the, there's using the lockdown, which is one, and there's using single pad partner, which is the other. Okay, but we look a bit more at the lockdown first, so getting from here to the underhook, because uh, again, you're not going to win this battle most of the time, and people tend to get to here, and they start worried about the person's head, they start pushing the person's head, none of this is going to help you, because it's going to put him further to this side, this is going to make my angle worse and worse and worse, I might lose the arm, whatever. I need to get on my side facing this way, so straight away, so this hand comes here, and I make sure I'm controlling his head 
with this pressure here. My shoulders are engaged, whatever. If I go lower, I go back here. Again, you can put a shoulder into my arm and things get worse and worse. The more I look this way, the worse life is, okay? So, this goes over the back to get onto the track as much as we can. And then we're gonna try and use this a little bit to try and get our elbow inside the head, okay? This gives us something. We're not gonna try and go back to half guard just yet. If I try and bring this knee out, again, I'm, my legs are a long way away from me. This opens up, things are potentially risky and dangerous here. So what I'm gonna do instead, I'm gonna get the lock down, push away. I wanna have this here just because I need to know that he doesn't have this knee in my arm. He's much bigger than me, if you can bring me next. This is, this is the problem. I can't do anything fancy with this and I can't circle in. I need this so I can get myself into the space here, okay? Now I have both of these, it is sometimes acceptable to start bringing the hand around because I'm already facing a little bit to this side, my body's relatively tight, and then I can sometimes come in, I can push, but I'm still pushing in this direction here. I'm not allowing him to ever turn me here. This is going to end badly most of the time, okay? So I'm on one side, I push away a little bit, I turn on here, this comes through, I may push here a little bit if the hand's still blocking my head, and then I go over, I shave the face, I come to here, but I'm still facing diagonally this way, okay? Then, I'm not, again, okay, super common mistake here, is guys now try and get the underhook and do this, okay? As soon as you do this, he drives this way into my elbow again, just go to drive straight forward, and then I end up in this ridiculous position here, and my arm's completely gone, okay? We don't want this. So, what we have to do is, again, we defend this, we can get pressure up here a little bit, that's fine. This comes over, and then we shave the face down here, and then all I'm looking to do is tuck my elbow to my ribs. Because, again, this, I cannot allow my shoulders to be isolated. Again, your shoulders don't like this very much. The longer you've been training, the worse it gets, okay? You just need to make sure your elbow is inside. So you're usually gonna sort of weave away and then just sort of chamber this down to your hip here. Now, there's almost no way you can re-underhook this. It's relatively safe, it's close to my body. Again, you can try paddling inside, but again, there's not a whole lot to really work with. <coughs> then we can circle out afterwards, okay? So, yeah, normal positioning. Things have begun to go wrong. Before we work with the first hook also guys, again, keep your legs tight and high, usually, because again, we count that need to come out. Again, pin, still tight with that. Over, over, push down, block here a bit if we can, okay? If this grip is still really annoying, you try and come inside and try and wedge it away a bit there, okay? If not, you can still do it with this, it still works, just a little bit harder, because this now means that as this is happening, I'm more opened up and the pressure is gonna be a bit worse on my hands. I'd like things to be a little bit closer, so I've got more power and structure. There, we come around, again, go, you literally don't try and bring it in front, don't be nice about it, it won't work, unfortunately. Again, we shave one side of the face here, and then we drop our elbow in, cutting the face there, push in, okay? Just bring it down to the body, and just put your hand in the chest, whatever, like you're saying with the Pledge of Allegiance or whatever. Um, I'm not sure which hand that is, but whichever one, it's the left hand now. Um, okay, once we have this and this, now we need to bring him up, so we do that by chambering our knees towards our chest, here, here, there. What follows up from that sort of bonus, but you've dealt with the problem, which is the crushing shoulder pressure of death. Okay, we don't want this. So again, we control, we try and keep the chin down, obviously, <coughs> try and take it on the jaw, because once it gets underneath here, we're just basically dead, and we speak funny. So, here and here, okay? So, step, lock down, push away, block this a little bit if we can, and then generally I come inside, and start to get some kind of space here. This means that now my head can move relatively freely, over, down, and then push away, and just tuck it straight away to the body there. Again, any time you're making, pretty much any time you're doing, going for an uh, underhook, that's the route you want to go. You very rarely want to do this, because again, unless you've got gumby shoulders, you're just going to get stuck. You're going to come around, it's going to be going great, and you end up here, then you push through, or you get this, or whatever, okay? So, boom, block, push, straight down, tuck in, then usually I'm just going to kind of wipe my elbow up as I bring my knees my chest, underhook, usually under the leg just to be safe, and we're on our side. Now, personally, I tend to give up on the, on the lockdown here now and start playing all the knee manipulation stuff. If you like the lockdown, you can keep it. You can start with all the horrible Ted Fanet shenanigans. You know, that won't work on you probably, but generally it would. Um, sort of, you know, groin splitters and so on and so forth. But the main thing is, again, the pressure's gone, you're underneath, your head is too close to him to get it back and then you can work out to others. If you want, if you don't even like half cut, you can probably go back to space here. It's fine, you've dealt with the cross face, which is the problem, okay? Last time. So again, pressure's already in, life sucks. Again, generally, controlling on here, try to get this tucked down, a bit of Again, if he's too high up for that to happen in the first place, then we come in, we push down, that gives me that most of the time. Again, if this is not very tight like it is now, we can skip it and just go inside there. But usually, we have to try and work a little bit more. 
inside, inside, push, chamber, whip up, and then we're inside there. Okay? And again, you can go around to the back or whatever. It's going to stop here with the control. Generally, you hook underneath here. People just explain why I have this here to stop him retreating. That's the main end. Because again, if I'm just here by itself, he can sit his hips back and just push my face away or whatever, and he'll re-pummel or whatever. I need to keep him up over me, so to do that, I need to keep this up here. And I'm not holding with my hand, I'm holding with my elbow, my body, so I'm holding him up in my chest here so that my body supports it, not my hand. Again, this is going to lose. He's got stronger legs than me. If he pulls back through that, he's going to take my arm clean off. Not going to help. But if I'm up here and it's close to my body, I can stay, I can hold, whatever. Again, nothing super, super, super exciting, but again, fundamental. Even if you don't play lockdown, if you get in a bad place, this is usually the best way out. All good? Simple, simple. On three, one, two, three. Um, if you're having trouble moving, then what's probably happening is you're focusing so much, so this is not going fine, until you get to here or whatever. If you're holding them down here, and then you try to push them up whilst holding them down, they're not going to go anywhere, okay? You have to make sure that when you're moving them, your knees support that movement. Since I've entered it, my knee has to be behind his thigh, behind his butt cheek, whatever. So when I move, it should affect him. Okay, if I'm back like here and here, this is slightly different. But if I'm positioned here, when I go, he should always move up a little bit with it. So don't, so when I'm actually doing the movement, I will temporarily release some of the tension on the feet to focus on what my knees are doing. The toes are still flexed and ready, so should he try to come out if I'm still there? But I don't want to try and just hold him down and then move up at the same time. This is fun, but it doesn't really do anything. Okay, so try to limit that. So we get up. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this with the small motions here. But if you need more power, again, full dirty dancing under the armpits is totally fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So those are both fine. Um, so secondary. So we're here and we don't have really long legs. Okay. So second route, if we are in this position and we need to get out, we never. If we try to lock down, it doesn't work. Again, we just can't get any kind of extension. What we're going to have to do here, generally, is go to half butterfly guard. This is generally going to be the route you always do if you're a smaller person, okay? Because again, cranking, if, if the person's much heavier than you, this isn't really going to help. It just locks you in place and gives them more chance to smash your face. We don't really want this, okay? So if we are the smaller person and we get to half guard, we've beaten our hips, he's gone past our knee here, we're in trouble, okay? We're nearly always going to try. If we can get this down here, great. If we can't, it doesn't matter. This leg comes over, same pin, I can't afford to lose his leg. This foot comes outside my body somewhere. Because I need to put in a butterfly hook, okay? And for that to happen, I need to be, you know, I need to establish a different angle of my hips. This is a big thing for all hip positioning. If you ever try to, sh to shrimp or to move your hips without moving this foot, you're always limiting how far you can go. If I'm here, I can't move my hips very far. The limiting factor of how far my hips can move is the position of this foot. If this foot goes to here, I can move here. My foot is here, going to go that far. So pretty much any time you're having trouble creating space, you're looking to place your foot further away to give you more range of hip motion. Okay? I can be on the back here, I can be here. Here it's still fine. Okay? I push off this, I move out, my knee comes in, and the foot circles back on the Okay? This is going to be the standard if you're smaller, because you need to play with the person's face so they don't smash your face. You need to give them something to worry about. And again, the lockdown won't do it because they're too much bigger compared to you. You need to worry, worry about their base a little bit more instead. Okay? So, again, there's always some things here. Generally, what happens to is you use that to unbalance them and get back to full butterfly guard, but there's other options. So, again, normal half guard. We're here, he's got pressure. I'm role playing a small person. Okay, so, again, this foot comes out here, I push away, here and here, and then my knee comes in. My foot's up. Okay, don't try to fold the foot underneath here, it won't work. Out, knee, and then you sort of character rotate, keeping your knee in the same place, kind of the same way as the elbow was. We focus on doing the elbow and the hand. Here it's the knee and the foot. Yeah, okay, half butterfly set in. Now, this is sometimes also, it keeps me on my side, it also makes it easier sometimes to set up this kind of stuff, this kind of separation, and pushing away, because I'm not pushing. From here, where I've got no space because I've already moved out, and I've already placed a bit of a barrier here, it becomes possible to set these things up here. That can then lead into the underhook if you want, or it can lead to full butterfly or setting out, or whatever else you want to do afterwards. Again, if you're much heavier, you don't generally want to do this because this is basically creating space um, to give you the chance to get a better position. If you're heavier, creating space is nearly always a bad idea. It just gives people, it gives small ninja people a chance to bounce around and do horrible things to you. You want control first, so 
So that's why bigger guys on bottom half will do a lot of thigh mastering, lockdowns, whatever, because if their knee comes out, they're gonna lose pretty much every single time. Whereas as a smaller person, you want to create that space because the lack of space, it allows them to put their weight on you. So, okay, so think, when we're doing this guys, we have to keep the knee down. Don't, don't be this guy. This is not gonna help anybody. Again, he's gonna be gone, and he's gonna be out there. He'll have you know, dinner and shit so by the time you get in position. Okay, so, out, out. So this is still staying pinned down the whole time. And it's a big thing people kind of forget in the half guard, is you cannot, you have to control his knee the whole time, one way or the other. If you don't have control over his knee, then he's gonna do bad stuff. So don't focus entirely on this. This still has to be chambered in. If you wanna curl your toes to help, that's fine. His knee stays on the floor, I adjust, foot comes in, and we get to here. Okay, if I have enough, this will usually make him a little bit uncomfortable. Often he will retreat because of this, and I make everything nice and simple. There you go, you can do your sweeps, you can set up. Whatever after this. Uh, oh, again, if not, again. So it could be a root into, you know, pushing away a little bit. It's going to become the underhook afterwards. Or it can be a root to the full. Butterfly go up. Come on. Whatever you want to do after this. Okay, so Jeremy, if you are a smaller person, anytime you get put flat, you want to put in the half butterfly hook straight away. To begin with, it's probably going to go wrong sometimes. You're going to put the hook in, they're going to step over and mount you or whatever. Make sure that your hook is close to your chest and you're here there. Don't start doing this or this because then the big person will just shove this, step over it, and you're going to look stupid. Okay? So make sure your knee is close to your chest so when the hook's in, he goes to push. This should always be in between him and the step over to your hips. Okay? So nothing super fancy, but again, just swim up that. Uh, for a little bit, so starting on the bottom, again, take it uh, Yeah, moving out, so pin down, step away, hip away, and then you're just pivoting here, kind of like a sort of pendulum instead from there. Don't, again, try to do this or whatever. In, in, okay, once you have this, usually it's quite easy to get the second leg out, so maybe you end up flattened by the fly guard, that's okay, it's not great, maybe you can sit up with it, or maybe you use this to push away, and that becomes your underhook afterwards. We're just looking to unbalance the person and create some space. Okay. Quite a question. For yes. You. So, for, if you have the butterfly hook in, like for you to actually do the, the sweep, do you have to go back to the full butterfly? No. Uh, je honestly, um, again, butterfly hooks. Uh, the butterfly guard is usually only driven by one leg because the second leg doesn't actually do any of the actual sweeping. It moves you, but it doesn't sweep the person. So generally, their base is going to be too good for the single butterfly hook to work by itself. <coughs> but if they, if they start to shift off in the wrong position, it might go. Um, I mean, you can. So sit down here. So I have this all going on. I could be over here and I could just drop this out and you know cut it through and use that as one hook. Uh, but as soon as I go to here, there's not really a lot you can do in one step from here because again, you're, by locking here, I give myself control, but I can also flatten myself out a bit. So I'd have to sit up. If I got both hooks in, I would have to sit away and get up so I can start making my sweeps happen from there. Okay. Whereas in here, you can sometimes, yeah, some guys will even use this, we use that as a half sweep or whatever afterwards. There's options to be had, but um, in general, you, you're going to have to transition out from half butterfly most of the time, unless you've got like good gi grips or something you want to add to it to really give you the extra power. Single half butterfly, if their base is good, isn't going to usually get you a sweep. Cool. Because you need to create a reaction, and that's done with the sort of the bigger jerky movements you're getting from here, this kind of you know, manipulation and stuff. Well, whatever. If you're starting from here and here, it's going to be difficult. Not impossible, but difficult. Okay. Cool. Cool. On three. One, two, three.